So let's let's talk about like the big big elephant in the room. What is the number one stereotype? Number one stereotype that a non-Asian woman has of an Asian man. <laughs> Come on. What is it? What is it, guys? Small penis. Small penis. What else? <laughs> Come on. Small penis. We throw it out there. What else? I like that the guy was like small penis. One girl was like, they're awkward. All right. So we have small penis, awkward. What else? Good at math. Good at math. <laughs> All right, this is university oh. pin. I'd hope so. What else? Come on. Is those the biggest stereotypes? Yeah. Shy. Frugal. Frugal. <laughs> Frugal. Um, shy. All right. What else? Come on. What else? Not athletic. All right. All these things, right? This is what you know. You think a non-Asian woman thinks about an Asian man? It's too bad. Like. We don't have any non-Asian women in here, do we? Oh. Um, let me actually give you the real stereotype that non-Asian women have about you, about me. Like, I generally date, you know, I, I've dated Asian girls, I've dated black girls, Latin girls, but, you know, 90% uh, of the girls I've ever dated are non-Asian. And the vast majority will tell me, you know, when I ask them, you know, as we, you know, get deeper into a relationship, you know, what is it that you actually think about Asian men, you know, before you met me, right? So, what do you think, this is a Playboy model, let us say, say perhaps someone's ideal epitome <coughs> of a femininity, not everybody, not every man's obviously, right? But for quite a few men in America, the Playboy model, you know, is this, this perfect woman for many guys. And this is Claire Sinclair, Playboy Playmate 2011. What do you think she thinks of Asian men? Okay. Probably a lot of you guys are saying, you know, the same things you said earlier. Small penis, frugal, quiet, yeah, right, shy, all these things, right? <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Before she was you know, playmate of 2011, she worked for me, okay? She moved out of Alhambra at the age of 18, and um, this is what she told me. If any, are, you, are any of you guys from California? You guys know Alhambra? It's like 80% <laughs> Asian, right? It's, it's, like, it's like completely dominated by Asians. But in the 18 years that she lived in Alhambra, she didn't think anything of Asians, right? Because in the 18 years of growing up, only white girls, I mean white guys, pardon me, white guys had asked her out. Only black guys had asked her out. Only Latin guys had asked her out. Asian guys never talked to her, never asked her out, never approached her, never befriended her. She didn't have stereotypes. It's like she didn't have anything to form them on. Maybe based on what the media, but here is what 90% of like all the girls, non-Asian girls I've dated, what they've said, what they thought about Asian men. And the same thing with Claire. The number one stereotype that women have of Asian men is Asian men only date Asian women. Asian men only date Asian women. That's what 90% of the girls I've ever dated have said. But Claire, this Playboy model, said what, you know, Sarah, like another wing girl, has said. This is what other non-Asian women think of Asian men. Not you have a small penis. Not that you're frugal. Not that you're really good at math. It's just that <laughs> you don't date anyone other than Asian. So why should she care? Why should she romantically invest herself into you? if you're going to simply reject her based off of her race, okay? So, do stereotypes exist in dating? Of course they do. I mean, dating by its very nature is discriminating. Each person is trying to find, evaluate, assess potential partners for the qualities that he or she wants. The problem, however, comes when people take automatic mental shortcuts.
to come to that decision. It's called heuristics, right? Now, these shortcuts dismiss or discount a group of people when, you know, instead of evaluating the individual qualities. It saves time, but obviously misses like, the, the precious individual, that person they're actually looking for. Now, there's a good book called Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. Any of you guys read that? Yeah, it's fascinating. Especially the part where, you, no, that's actually freakonomics, never mind. <laughs> um, so the fix for prejudice, then, is to interrupt that automatic mental shortcut. It's essentially get that person to think through their decision, to actually go through their decision process and fully evaluate you without the use of that prejudice. Okay? So, you know, I have a lot of Asian guys. About 75% of my clientele are Asian guys come to me. And generally speaking, we get like the, the two types of Asian guys. There's the American-born Asian guy, and there's the Asian-born Asian guy. Right? Now I've had, in a, you know, I'm not going to name names, you know, for privacy's sake, but I've actually had like at least two Wharton School like business people, and they're like tall Asians, they're, like good looking Asians. I'm like, damn, I wish I could be you Asian. <laughs> right? It's like, if only I was that tall and good looking, I wouldn't have no trouble. But instead, they come to me. Because they are having trouble. Then I've got, like, <clears throat> the Asian-born, you know, son of a communist general, and he's, like, a millionaire by the age of, like, 18. I'm like, damn, you got money, son. <laughs> right? And still he comes to me. <clears throat> Who do you think does more successful during one of our dating and confidence boot camps? The American-born Asian or the Asian-born Asian? You want to take a wild shot in the dark here? The Asian-born or the China-born Asian? <laughs> Doesn't have to be China, but okay. Asian-born Asian. All right, why do, you th why do you think that? Why do you think that? Why do you think the Asian-born Asian? <laughs> yes, you're completely right. right. It is because we talked about like self-internalized racism. All right. it is, it's not that it's, it's impossible, because this is part of our job, right? to defeat people's limiting belief systems. But can, you know, imagine, like, again, a tall, good-looking, handsome Asian guy. He dresses well. But then he just thinks, oh, I can't talk to her. Like, why can't you talk to her? Well, she's white. She'll never date an Asian guy. Right? Or, you know, she's black. She'd never date an Asian guy. You know? That's, you know, he, physically everything's working. But mentally, that takes a lot of work to destroy those limiting beliefs. As opposed to, like, the Asian-born Asian, who's never heard of a kid you know, some other kid in class calling him a gook or a chink or a slant or seeing all the kind of negative media perceptions that put him as a second-class citizen. He's never seen that. He doesn't even know what that is. He's never seen it ever. All right? He'll do better. Like, he may have, like, a bushy hair, you know, like the bowl haircut, all right? The, the funky glasses, the weird style, the broken English. But he doesn't realize that he's not supposed to be able to succeed. All right? um, and call it the heart of the Fobby Lion, so to speak. Right? But let me tell you this story. This is a, a fun little story. It was the first time I was in New York. It was about like 2007. And I was being followed up, you know, first time ever, followed by Asian Week. And they were putting me on the front cover, and they sent this journalist, and they sent this photographer to follow me. And we were at like this hotel gone to work which is this rooftop bar, and it's got a poolside. It's gorgeous. It's very classy. Everybody's dressed up in suits and all this, like, you know, evening gowns. It's a very nice place. So there I am with my students, the photographer, the journalist, and I have this Singaporean student. He's like five foot nothing, right? Five foot nothing. And he's got bushy hair, sun, you know, not, uh, glasses. All right, it's very energetic. He's got this broken English. He's basically um, <coughs> doing a tour of America because you know he's got to go back to Singapore. And I know it was, it was like mandatory military or something. I don't know. I, I forget exactly. And <clears throat> I see this tall, beautiful blonde over across Hotel Gonzalo. 
I grab my student and says, I want you to go over there and tell her she's beautiful. Just, just go over there and tell her she's beautiful. So he's like, yeah, okay. He starts walking, right? He starts walking. <laughs> and the photographer sees this. And so he starts going, oh, interesting. And he starts following behind him. I'm like, no! <laughs> I was like, this is not what I wanted. It's like, you know, who knows what will happen? Because this is the numbers game. You win some, you lose some. All right? And this is literally what happens when my five foot nothing Singaporean, fobby, broken English student went up to this six foot tall blonde. This is literally what he does. He goes up to her, he goes, you are fucking beautiful! <laughs> If you guys look in Asian Week, 2007 issue, open up in the middle, there's a bunch of photographs of me, my coaches, you know, this photo shoot, and there's a photograph of him, five foot nothing, Singaporean, Bobby student, sitting down, very tall, beautiful blonde, holding hands, getting her number. Okay? And that's what I mean by interrupting somebody's heuristic thinking when they form judgments about you. We call this going direct. All right? You just go up to a person and be a sincere, genuine, dominant masculine. Not, you know, hiding around the bush. Just go up there and tell her that you'd like to meet her. Maybe take her out for dinner or something like that. But that you are romantically interested in her on some level. Because if she is a black girl, a Latin girl, a white girl, or whatever, who has never, ever been approached by an Asian guy, her automatic assumption is that you are not interested in her as a romantic partner. You're just asking to hang out with her so you guys can study together or something like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, this methodology, the direct style, does not work in every circumstance. But again, it, it is incredibly effective for Asian guys when it comes to introducing themselves non-Asian women, all right?